Welcome back, WNST, Taps from Baltimore. And Baltimore Positive, I, uh, I, I've got leftovers. I've got gravy. I've got cranberry. I've got pumpkin pie. The one thing I do not have that I want is I want my football. And uh, I'm wearing my Raven shirt today. We're all sort of lighting a lavender candle or, uh, you know, holding at a, a purple kite that on Sunday maybe they'll play football. Luke Jones joins us now. Luke, uh, you're a family man. You're a religious guy. You're you know nice holiday. You got the whole family together. You got Thanksgiving. Turkey. I usually leave you alone. I mean, like I usually let you just like watch football and just be with your family, and you don't have to send texts. And the Ravens practice on Thanksgiving, but you you don't go. You know, it's like, this was a whole different level of like Turkey Day. Now, wasn't it? No question. Well, how about the fact that you and I were talking, what, four or five days ago, breaking down the loss to the Titans and assuming either very late Thursday night into the early wee hours of Friday morning or uh, a typical next morning post-game reaction to Raven Steelers, we're not talking anything about football itself right now. We're wondering when the Baltimore Ravens are going to play another football game. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, and, and not to make light of players testing positive, team personnel po testing positive, wanting to have good thoughts and prayers that uh, people recover and, and don't experience too many symptoms and understanding the reality of a pandemic. But it's just, it, it's very surreal uh, in, in that way. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's wild. And, and this is, I mean, we've talked about this all along. You and I have many spirited discussions going all the way back to March about this uh, and speaking about the practicality of it, whether it was possible. And I, I think the one thing that you and I agreed on all along was this was never going to go perfectly, whether you were going to try to do it or not, whether you were going to pull it off in the end or not, you were going to have positive tests. You were going to have uh, trials and tribulations and challenges with the schedule and now, this goes back to when we were talking about the Tennessee Titans outbreak uh, several, you know, several weeks ago. I mean, this is a while back now, uh, and I'll continue to go back to how the league had the, I don't know if it was ignorance or arrogance to assume. Or both. That's maybe both. <laughs> but not, not to say that you couldn't have a season and play a football season, but to assume it was going to be the typical 17 weeks, one by week, go right into the playoffs then and pull it off. And, you know, we said at that point, the league really, uh, it was naive to think that you were going to be able to pull that off. The, the idea well, that you didn't Well, while watching the NBA and the NHL do what they did, which was bubble up, sure. which is what science has told them to do, right? And baseball eventually acquiesced and went to that model for the postseason to get the games in, as they say. But you know, all along, people have been bitching to me about, like, being too negative about it or something. I'm like, I'm not negative. I got on a plane and flew to Houston. You know, I mean, I, right. I'm into the games. I love to see them play. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed I wasn't in Pittsburgh on Thanksgiving, you know. Right. I speak to your family and holidays and trying to leave Christmas alone and leave the 4th of July alone and leave Memorial okay. Day alone. Certainly leave Thanksgiving alone. Um, and, you know, I, I would just say this for six months, we have discussed this as you don't want to be that team. And as the reports come out of them and that's all they can be, right? Like you've been in the building or near the building a few times. I haven't driven out one winning drive since March, oh, March, Marshall, Marshall, yeah, Yon, Marshall yeah. Yonda's retirement press conference. Correct. And I, <laughs> last time I was there, Joe Flacco was there for crying yeah. out loud. Yeah. So um, I've always thought like this, but I didn't think it would be the Ravens because I thought that John and Dick would be too much of a prick to allow a, a strength and conditioning coach to run around without a mask on. Like, I just thought that they would be – they would toe the line so hard that they wouldn't even let me into the games. How about that? <laughs> but, but isn't that a lesson that we've talked about a lot, regardless of specific opinions on specific mitigation efforts or what – politicians should or shouldn't do or what people should or shouldn't do i i feel there's always been a sense of wanting to have more control over this than we actually do let's face it millions of people across the world have gotten this and so many people have, have unfortunately passed away from this let's be clear for any individuals groups you know people that 
haven't behaved in a way that they shouldn't and, and got the virus as a result. There have been many, 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 many who did nothing irresponsible in, in the way that you and I or, or anyone else would view it, and they still got it. So from that standpoint, yes, you'd like to think you're not going to be the team, but I think it was naive to think there weren't going to be at least a couple teams that would go through this. In the same way that Major League Baseball had the Marlins, what, the first week of the season, the Cardinals shortly thereafter, and that was at a point where spread was not it was not as widespread uh, from a country standpoint as it was then. So, so again, this is where I go back to the league. Look, you want everything to go perfectly. You want everyone to do what they're supposed to do. If they're experiencing symptoms, not show up at the building and report it right away. Wear your mask religiously uh, for the players and people in the building to wear their, their wrist GPS tracker, whatever that they, uh, that helps them contact trace. But we also know that, Whenever human beings are involved in doing anything, it doesn't go perfectly. You know, the, the idea of having people a strategy do what they want, not and what they should. And expecting 100% perfect compliance is, it, but it's not a strategy if it takes 100% for it to work. The point is not that you don't do those things. My point is, from a league standpoint, there had to be some realistic acceptance that we're probably going to have this happen a, a few times. And and let's be clear, we're talking about. We're, we're now 12 weeks into the regular season and we're still talking about being able to count on two hands a number of games that have been shifted the, the week of the game. You know, of course, they did some shuffling earlier in the season when you had bye week flexibility. And, and look, the Ravens and the Steelers played uh, a, a week later than they had to. And that was fine. Like that didn't negatively impact the Ravens. Now the Steelers lost their bye week uh, because of Tennessee and uh, the outbreak there. And now, They've lost some more time, but again, that's where we all take a step back and say, look, we want to have a football season, but we also understand the reality that it's a pandemic and there's going to be challenges to this. There are going to be positive tests. That's why the league implemented the 16 player practice squad and some of the roster flexibility. So for me, this isn't even about the competitive disadvantage, although we'll get to that point. For right now, and well, why I've they gone Eddie Fainer all stars. I said all along, you know, you don't. If the Ravens go up there and play on Sunday, if they sanction this, if they do, it's not because I'm a bleeding heart Ravens fan because I thought they were going to lose anyway. So I, you know, this isn't about winning or losing. Sure, this is about are sure. you going to sanction NFL football? Or are you going to put the band together and have a fake singer? You know what I mean? Like, and then and then put See, it out but, there but, but I, and but say again, that it's real. Okay, but at the same time, think about how we all celebrated Thanksgiving on Thursday. I'm guessing in many cases, I'm not, I'm not saying everyone because I can't speak for everyone, but in many cases, it was very different than it normally was. That's how we have to view the NFL. That's how we had to view Major League Baseball. That's how the NBA and the NHL finished their seasons. Uh, well, that's in not any a, a fun. Bubble. I don't want to look at it differently, you know? I mean, it's already so, bad enough the Steelers are undefeated. <laughs> well, that's sort of the same. if you say it's not, but we have to, because you can't do it normally. I mean, well, then, then the question is, should, should they play or should they not play with eight or t- I, what I tweeted all day on Tuesday and Wednesday before your dinner was interrupted on Thursday night with uh, uh, havoc. Um, I-, I tweeted that what's it the was magic dessert number? more so, thankfully. Oh, yeah, a little eggnog. A little, but, hey, speaking of dessert, uh, it has saw your do, mom it, had vanilla bean to really, ice cream. I did see that on I, I saw that yes, on her it, Facebook. It, she cannot it was hide very that good. Me. It was delicious with the apple pie. It was a nice, it was some very nice comfort food before the, you know what, hit the fan shortly thereafter with uh, uh, the Lamar Jackson news. But, but getting back to what you're saying, I don't think that, I don't think the competitive part of this is the point at the moment. When you're talking about a situation where you're having to cancel a football game, it doesn't, it is not because all well, the Ravens are missing six starters. That's why they have a 16 player practice squad. The issue is having an outbreak with, insufficient evidence that that outbreak has been contained. If the Ravens had a bunch of players test positive on Monday, and let's say they, let's say they were never going to play Thursday. Let's say they, they had players test positive Monday, and their next game was Sunday, which you know, ultimately who knows how this is playing out. But if they had that, and then they had two, at least two, you would think, and that's kind of been – you know, going back to the Titans at what they kept talking about the sweet spot to be able to talk about opening up the facility was two straight days without a positive. So if the Ravens had five, six players and let's say Lamar Jackson and a couple other 
starters, which, you know, this is what we're talking about with this list of players. It's a number of starters. But if you contain the outbreak and then you have two, three straight days with negative tests, you play then. And you play with your practice squad guys. And that, it's no different. I mean, the Patriots, let's go back to that. They had what? I think it was upwards of eight, nine, ten players that opted out before the season. You know, from a competitive balance standpoint, you'd say, well, that's not fair. They shouldn't have to play without those guys. Those guys made a choice, and that's great. I respect that. But, again, this goes back to we can't view this thing through the lens of it's going to be totally normal. That was the NFL's mistake with this and not having a couple open weeks built in. Not just talking well, now, about your body. The bi-week. crisis now is what to do with the game. I mean, forget the crisis of coronavirus and the health and player safety, as was pointed out by Derek Wolf on Twitter the other day. But um, what are they going to do tactically with the game? So, I mean, we could sit here and wring our hands about Steve Saunders or about the who touched who or how this happened or six feet away or whatever. So they're either going to play the game and it's going to be crud or they're not going to play the game, and that is going to be problematic, right? So let's go down two paths here, Luke. Let's go down the they're not going to play the game, and it's not going to happen Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, and obviously the Ravens already had a game on Thursday against the Cowboys, so you know now we're kicking them down. The But I don't know how it affects other teams. Mm-hmm. But what, what would a remedy here be if you're Roger Goodell and there's nowhere to move a game, which is, to your point, they put themselves in this situation. I ask a few pretty basic barometer questions on, on Tuesday, mm-hmm. Wednesday. One was, how many positive tests would it take to cancel the game? Like, at what point, the, like, to your point, we don't have empty days. We need two days to cancel the game. Fair enough. But, but how many, if 35 guys popped on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Well, I mean, that, what, what, 18 got what, – what's the number? They, I don't know. I mean, maybe there isn't a number. You're saying it's the time lapse that would cancel the game. That's fine. So you have all of this. Now what happens when you have to cancel the game, right? So what's the plan here? Well, and that's, that's what the league's going to have to figure out here. Uh, because to your point that you just brought up, they do – They are scheduled to play the Cowboys on Thursday night. And now you're in a position where, depending on the timing of this, and Adam Schefter reported late Thursday night that John Harbaugh's told players, and by the way, it'd be nice if the Ravens would, you know, come come out from behind the curtain. (laughs) We haven't heard from anyone since Monday when they reopened the facility. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, good point. Get 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 on them about that on Twitter. Please do. And to be clear, I'm not saying that means we deserve a detail-by-detail update on the health of each player that's tested positive. I'm just saying – you know, we're, we're getting, we're seeing certain information leaked to national reporters. And meanwhile, you know, <laughs> no one's talked uh, officially from the, from the organization since they reopened the building on Monday. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, but you're talking about a Cowboys game now you know, on Thursday night that further complicates this because even if you try to play the Steelers on Monday, Tuesday, or, or you just, even if you just postpone it outright, you're talking about still waiting to see uh, enough evidence that you're on the other side of the outbreak uh, in terms of players testing positive. And then you get into, well, how much prep time is there realistically for the Cowboys game? So are you potentially moving that game from Thursday to Sunday? I mean, really it comes down to this, Nestor. And again, I, I know you you keep bringing up the competitive part of this and, and look, I mean, Ravens aren't going to have Lamar Jackson for potentially two games here. And, and that's heaven forbid talking about the recovery aspect of this. That is not just a guarantee that 10, 10 days and every single player is fine, uh, but you are really talking about, you know, where you get to a point where the competitive side of this, where guys haven't practiced for so long. And this was talked about with the Titans. I really feel if you're going to play the game and not make the Ravens forfeit, and I already said, I said this when people were talking about it with Tennessee, for me, it's not about punish. For me, it's not even about punishing the team that had the outbreak. It's about giving the other team a win. When when you're talking about a 16 game schedule and you're just giving the other team a win. I, I have a problem with that from a competitive standpoint. So if you're not going to do that and you're not playing the game Monday or Tuesday, you're looking at the week 18 scenario, which the league uh, a couple weeks back did approve. And see, I think that the forfeiture thing I said all along that that's what the rule should have been. Not, not to piss on the Ravens or any other team. See, I I said all along, if you can't get there on Sunday, you give the game away and let's prepare for next week. 
because if you were going to go play with 18, without 18 guys or 20 guys, chances are you were going to get your ass kicked. And, and for me, for me, the league shouldn't sanction mismatches. That, that's, that's where I go. See, I, I totally, that, see, that's I totally where I really disagree with it, that. You know? So, so at, at the same time, well, the San Francisco 49ers have dealt with so many injuries that they've had mismatches in games. I mean, again, we can't view this through the lens of, of normal. <laughs> it's not normal. I, 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 why did the league do a 16-player practice squad then? John Harbaugh is saying the virtues of that. And I'm not picking on John. I'm using him as an example here. He's talked a whole lot about having the 16-player practice squad and how that's made roster moves. You know, they've been more flexible and they've been able to keep players in the organization they normally wouldn't have been able to. But the ultimate purpose of that was for this very scenario where you have an outbreak and you have a number of players that are unavailable and you have a reserve of players to, to tap into to be able to field a team. doesn't mean it's going to be fair. I mean, my goodness. Five years ago, we were talking about Jimmy Clausen and Ryan Mallett starting games at quarterback for the Ravens. There's nothing, you know, from a competitive balance standpoint, you're looking at that. Like, that's crazy. This is so bad. They might have to bring Colin Kaepernick back, huh? Yeah. From a football standpoint, from a football standpoint, and again, understanding that the health and and safety of individuals is, is at stake here. But from a football standpoint, players testing positive at that point, are viewed in the same way that anyone else is injured. I mean, that's that's how you have to do it. Otherwise, then, so what? But it's if contagious. You're starting quarterback. That, 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 that's that, it's con- that, that's where I would stand up if I were in the owners' meetings back in the spring and say, right. "But it's contagious." It's. I always said, "What if the Packers' offensive Wait, line you, gets you? Were, what if the were Chiefs just, get? What if the Steelers got this and, and undefeated? They're undefeated and they can't play the game. I mean, I think it's it's not different because it's the Ravens and the Ravens are an also ran. I sat and watched four also rans all day amidst my turkey on Thursday. So also rans, we get those at the end of the year. But I, I do think it, it's different if it's Pat Mahomes January thirteenth, and that's what I've talked about, or Lamar Jackson January thirteenth, which I've talked about all year. Now they're being asked that question. All right, it's Friday, game Sunday, everybody's sick, nobody's practiced. Are we going to go through with this? Are we going to move this? Or what are we going to do here? And I don't know that they really have, like, a guideline, even in New York, that even Roger says, here's the flow chart. If this, then that. If that, then this. I I think that they're on Thanksgiving night. The game was supposed to be played. It wasn't being played. They right. still didn't have an answer. The Ravens are hiding in the hills. I don't know where Chad Steele is. I know where Kevin Byrne is. He's on a golf course right now. Hi, Kevin. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Fans are saying, well, is there a plan? Media people like me, smart asses like me and you are saying, well, what's the plan? I mean, is there a procedure? Is there a protocol? Is there a strategy? Is there – I mean, th- these are people – Luke, when, when the playoff scenarios come out, it reads like a TGI Friday's menu. You know what I mean? It's 15 right. pages of possibilities for who splits, who wins coin tosses, right? Literally. Right. And they get a pandemic on their hands, and it's, you know, Friday afternoon. Nobody knows who's playing. By the way, Mike Tomlin doesn't know if he's playing either. So, like, the, the whole part of this is the leadership. Who's the leader? What's the rules? Who's making it up? And, and what, what are we waiting for here? That's, that's what I would ask. Well, well and, and this is where it comes back to the poor planning from the, the beginning of not having time built into the schedule to allow for games to be postponed, period. The, the idea of trying to play Thursday night football is scrutinized under the most normal of conditions from a player safety standpoint. Why in the hell are we trying to play Thursday night games when a team has an outbreak on a Monday? You know, they find out late Sunday night that J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram test positive from Sunday testing. And why are you trying to play Thursday night games? The, the ske- it, again, I'll, I'll keep coming back to this, and I've made this point over and over and over again. You have to plan for things not to go perfectly when you're talking about this. Because t- to your point, even though I said from a football standpoint, you have to view it as players – that are out on the COVID list in the same way that someone has a high ankle sprain or they tore their AC, they're unavailable. And that's that. And you have a 16 player practice squad to account for that, but to not have an open week built into the middle of the season, to not have an additional open week 
built into the end of the season. And even if you do that, let's say you go to 19 weeks for the season. How many years, Nestor, have we heard about the NFL saying, wow, we'd love to be able to push the Super Bowl back to President's Day weekend? I've heard that over and over and over. Here was a time where you could indirectly do that if you build in a schedule that's 17, or still 16 games, your normal 17 weeks, and then you add two additional weeks. And you have – that way you're not talking about, okay, well, well we can play this game that is supposed to be Thursday, and now it's going to be Sunday. Maybe we could move, move it to Monday or Tuesday. Uh, or we're going to flip around this team schedule. You know, late, late Thursday night I was hearing, well, you could move, move the Ravens-Cowboys game to, to Sunday and make Pittsburgh – you know, put Pittsburgh-Washington on Thursday. Wait a second. You're going to tell another team they have to play a Thursday night game now when they were planning for a Sunday night game? No, it doesn't work that way. That's ridiculous. But – if you had built in time into your schedule for the very possibility, if not inevitability, of a couple teams experiencing some outbreaks, and this is where the NFL dropped the ball because they saw how this played out in baseball. You had the Marlins have an outbreak a week into the season. You had the Cardinals, what, the following week, uh, an outbreak. Now, baseball was able to get it done, but you have open dates in the schedule. You had seven inning doubleheaders that you had to play, and I, I know – you cringe at the competitive part of that. Uh, and look, I'm, under normal circumstances, I agree, but we're not in normal circumstances. So I just don't want to watch play- it. I don't want to watch the Steelers or, or, or the Ravens beat the Steelers 58 to, to 10 with quad A play. I just don't want to see that. I mean, I, 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 I don't any more than I want to see Nebraska play Pacific or whatever, you know, like those kinds of – Alabama beat somebody two weeks ago, 63-3, whatever. I, I, that's not football to me. That's not, that's not what the Shield stands for. That's not what they're trying to fo- sanction. Well, but at the same time, was it football when Jimmy Clausen had to come in and play against, uh, you know, Seattle? Dude, I I've think seen it Spurgeon was win. Season. You're, you're well, tell, you know what I mean? I mean, I remember the replacement case. Well, I want to go back but, to but one just, thing you said earlier, ignorance and arrogance. They ignored – scientists and they were arrogant in regard to well, we're the NFL, you know, the virus ain't getting us. I mean, that, that's for those toads over at baseball, you know, like that, that's the part that's incredible to me. And I don't know, I don't see they lost money on Thursday night by not playing. I mean, they're the NFL, they print money, right? But they lost money on Thursday night and they've lost a lot of money sure. throughout all this and it's cost them a lot of money and they're going to lose money on the Super Bowl. And the reason, to your point, they didn't want to move the Super Bowl by a week. They didn't want to get on the phone to Tampa and say, we're moving the Super Bowl by a week when all the hotels, all the every, 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 everything is planned for that day that, oh, we're going to move it by a week. Well, we have to move out. The Super Bowl department won't like that if we have to move everything by a week. So right. they, they, they wanted to, to, to take the path of least resistance until the resistance comes. Now, here's the resistance. The resistance yeah. is it's Black Friday. And you, got, you got the marquee game in the whole calendar. Raven-Steelers is the matchup that we would have said in August. Man, I, if anything were to go wrong on, let's say, um, Steelers-Ravens on Thanksgiving night, you know, what, what would they do? Well, then, then here we go. Then the next nightmare scenario would be Mahomes Roethlisberger for the AFC Championship on January 23rd, and this happens. I, they had to know this, that they're, they're playing with fire. And to your point, ignorance and arrogance, which I'm going to put a star next to that, uh, Luke, because, yeah, you know, I mean, most of the problems in our lives are ignorance and arrogance, right? Like that, that's sort of how we got here to begin with, right? But, I mean, it's – it's a pandemic and, and we can, you know, you brought up Steve Saunders and look, he's being disciplined by the team and it's very unfortunate. Who knows if he's going to survive from an employment standpoint uh, with all this, I have no idea. But th- the point is if it wasn't him, if it wasn't the Ravens, it was going to be someone else. This is the reality. That's why you have to plan and have flexibility within your schedule to account for this. You're in a position now where what all, but I think, Two teams at this point have, have had their bye week. So the ship has sailed. So if this happens three weeks from now to another team, what are they going to do? It's the same. They're having the same exact discussion. You know, and that's why you get you have this feeling of what the heck are you going to do? When are you playing the game? What's When do you get to a point where too many players have tested positive and you can't even field a, an active 48-man game day roster? You know, th- those are all valid questions that you bring up, but this is, again, where it goes back to why didn't you build in the flexibility into your schedule? And I, I still think 
if you had put a an open week somewhere in the first seven, eight weeks of the season, an open week at the end of the regular season, and you know, let's say teams still keep their bye week, so you still would have had some flexibility on that front too. You would have had no problem at that point, and you, and you make all your teams understand this, and, and you understand, guys, you, you might be on the short end of this. If, if you're Pittsburgh, for example, where you're going to have a game week that gets disrupted and it's going to get, get moved until later in the season, that's just reality. I mean, I mean, the, the Orioles were one of the first teams to play the Marlins in, in the midst of, of, you know, following their outbreak. And they had a couple things altered with their schedule. And you just make teams and owners understand that that's just the way it's going to be this year. And it's not going to be perfectly equal <laughs> and, and perfectly fair all, all the time. But that's just where, that's where we're living right now. That's where we're trying to make money and, and be able to have a season. So players can get paid and owners can make the money they're going to make. So. I, I just think the it was so naive to think in a 17, you know, in 2020 that you were going to play your normal 17-week schedule with one bye week, no open weeks to be able to reschedule. And, oh, yeah, we're, we're still going to squeeze in those Thursday night games that are, are, have been so problematic from a player safety standpoint and quick turnarounds as it is. So, yeah, you have a Thursday night game and then, oh, you're going to have an outbreak you are in this position if you're the league looking like you've been caught with your pants down and you have no plan whatsoever, because frankly, from a scheduling standpoint, there's not a whole lot they can do right now uh, other than go to the week 18 scenario. And look, conceivably you, you put the game in week 18 and the Steelers continue to roll on. And I don't know, they're, they're 13 and two, let's say, and let's say the Ravens because of, the fact that, oh, yeah, they were kind of struggling to begin with, and now you have this outbreak, and who knows what happens. I mean, the, the Ravens might be out of contention by week 18, and if that's the case, maybe you don't play the game at all. Uh, and that's something I talked about a lot with you with baseball, that you know, at some point in time, there might be, have to be an acceptance that you're not going to get all 60 games in. It, with the NFL, and this is where they've talked about the scenario of going to an 18 playoff field and expanding it just a bit, you might get to a point where you're not able to make up a game, or it might be between a couple teams where it doesn't really change anything from either they're not in the playoffs or it doesn't drastically change the seeding. So, you know, I, I, short of playing it Monday or Tuesday, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, if, if you're not playing it then, I don't know when else you're playing it other than the proverbial week 18 that gets created. And you know, at, at that point, who knows? Pittsburgh might have the number one seed locked up already. And you know, if things continue to go south for the Ravens, maybe they're out of playoff contention at that point. Maybe it doesn't even need to be played. So, you know, it, I, I'm not saying I have the perfect answer here, but flexibility was key to make this season work. And the NFL did not create nearly enough with their schedule. And now they're dealing with the consequences of it. And my guess is this is not going to be the final outbreak that the, the league deals with this year. And I'm not even talking about an Armageddon scenario where half the league is dealing with something like this uh, at one point. But inevitably, the Titans, it happened to them in, what, week four, week three, week four, whenever that was. It's happened to the Ravens in week 12. Well, you know, kind of looking at the timing and seeing what the spread is as a, as a country, I'm guessing there's going to be another scenario like this. And, you know, we can blame a, a certain individual all we want, or we can also have the understanding that a lot of people get this, and it's highly contagious. And in some cases, people who've done everything right and didn't do anything negligent still got it. So the NFL is not going to be completely absolved from that. That's not to say that you shouldn't do everything you can to mitigate, but it's an understanding that it, it, this was probably inevitable, whether it was going to be the Ravens or any of the other uh, 30 teams other than the Titans who've already gone through something like this. He is Luke Jones. He is Baltimore Luke. He will not be in Owings Mills. None of us will be in Owings Mills. I'm not even driving Who here. I'm not when? even going to Owings Mills Boulevard. <laughs> How about that? Um, you know, we're, we're sort of standing by. If there's a game on Sunday, we, we, we'll tweet about it. If there's not, if it's Monday, we'll move. But I, 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 I dare I say at some point something will happen. Um, and when all this is over with, maybe we'll you know, have some greater understanding about what the league was figuring out on Thanksgiving and Black Friday and trying to get a game in. But uh, in the meantime, the new Baltimore Positive is launched. Uh, the ice cream is available. We would love for you to order some ice cream this month. I'll be telling you about it all month, $15.70 off. Uh, my wife and I actually sat near the, the box of uh, uh, eight that comes and the little, uh, the little Atarka uh, uh, truck that 
probably you've seen in the Visit Baltimore ads uh, over the course of the weekend. Eight flavors. You pick your flavor, $15.70 off. Box of eight delivered for $40.30 to your door. Personalized with the flavors you like. And um, Luke, I, I, I have to talk to your mom. I mean, do I, do I need permission to talk to your mom or do, can I talk to her without you knowing? Your face, your Facebook friends with her. All right. So, so, uh, you know, I feel a little <laughs> weird talking to your mom without you knowing about it, but I see the vanilla bean ice oh, cream, okay. you know, and I, I want to like mm-hmm. say to her that they have 27 flavors. You, you, you know, you could, you can have a pumpkin cheesecake. You can have a pumpkin spice latte. You can do what I did and take a, take a flyer on the sweet potato crumble. <laughs> My God, the sweet potato crumble is unbelievable. This is wake and bake. Uh, this is a primary flavor they have. I don't even keep this around because I like, I like honey graham too much. So, uh, but wake and bake, peanut butter cup, they're all available, 27 flavors. You don't have to be like Luke's mom and just pick the vanilla bean, although there's nothing wrong with vanilla bean. It's delicious. But I would tell and, you that the eggnog's ve- available, peppermint bar. And to be very clear, it was a family friend who actually gave us that, and they had heard about Tarka from WNST, Baltimore Positive. So, and and think about it, vanilla with with pie. That's pretty standard there, you know. I mean, so I went with I a pumpkin. I went with a pumpkin my mom spice latte next to my pumpkin pie. It was special. My oh. mom is waiting for the pistachio. That's she loves pistachios. So that's this, that's what she's looking for. This will be the best <laughs> pistachio ice cream she's ever. She's looking had. forward to it. No, I mean, look, <laughs> you can just tell her that that when we. We got the, we love pistachio ice cream too. My wife loves pistachio. It's like one of her favorite flavors. She loves pistachio pudding. She loved the pistachio milkshakes. Remember the old milkshakes, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, she was all gung ho. Like pistachio was one of the, like, give me that. And she took one bite of it. She's like, oh my God, it's like full <laughs> of nuts. <laughs> so, um, your mom's going to be very happy with it. That's, that's a good call. Excellent. Pistachio Excellent. might be – there's honey graham and pistachio as far as non-seasonal flavors, but the seasonal flavors, the pumpkin spice latte, winner, and I'm telling you, sweet potato crumble. I'm much more of a pumpkin pie guy than a sweet potato pie. I like sweet potato pie. Nothing wrong with sweet potato, mm-hmm. but I prefer pumpkin pie. I'm telling you, this sweet potato crumble is one of the greatest things I've ever had. So I'll, I will die on that hill. You're Believe making me hungry now. If you order to Harka, <laughs> get the sweet potato. You don't have to get the eggnog because maybe you like eggnog or you don't. Get the sweet potato crumble. You'll thank me later. All available one click away at Harka Brothers uh, and at a BaltimorePositive.com. All of our sponsors have been so great. Leonard Raskin uh, joined us earlier uh, talking some football. Uh, Planet Fitness is uh, always here and open and safe and socially distanced. I also had uh, Teddy Savage on this week talking about working in. He does Tuesday night work-ins. Um, and he was great. He's a Baltimore guy, poly guy, and now an internet superstar at a plan of fitness.com. He's their, their international spokesperson on Tuesday from right here in Baltimore. So a little love there for plan of fitness and our friends at sport culture court came by. Um, they're doing 25% off all sport culture for any WNST user. I got to get that into the new ad uh, through the holidays as well. If you want a magma lamp and they also have this really cool car door thing, go to baltimorepositive.com. You'll see it. Um, I thought just Pete had that on the Mustang over Coons Ford, but no, you can get that. You can actually get that with a Denver Bronco logo if you want, but I would prefer it with a Raven logo. I am Nestor. He is Luke. We are together. Ness at BaltimorePositive.com reaches me. Luke at WNST.net reaches him. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, and my wife and I are eating ice cream with our cat all over the internet. We are WNST.net, AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore. Sports, positive, football, pandemics.